Hello, 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 and thank you for tuning on to another episode of our Scripture Breakdown Ministry. My name is David Abraham, and our scripture for today comes from Romans 5, verses 1 to 4. And it reads, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into his grace, in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance, character, and character, hope. I repeat, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into his disgrace, in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance, character, and character, hope. Now, I want to divide the scripture into four parts. And the first part says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, now, um, the subsequent um, chapters, that's from 1 to 3, sorry, 1 to 4, kept explaining the concept of faith and the justification of God. So, from what we gathered, a brief synopsis of it says that Christ died for our sins and we, Christ took upon all our sins. So, he suffered for our sins, he died for our sins, he took upon all all our sins and when he died when he died stayed in the belly of the earth for three days god was justified so all the suffering of christ justified um justified christ and in turn justified us as his children justified us as the sons and daughters of god so we are justified originally when we confess jesus as our lord personal lord and savior we are being justified automatically and so that justification is a continuous word is a continuous thing is a doing thing like salvation is a doing thing justification is a doing thing reconciliation is a doing thing reconciliation is a doing thing as well so here it says we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ so the justification of god also released peace in some other episodes i spoke about the covenant of peace so because christ shed blood on on the, on the cross of calvary he was crucified dead and was buried so when he resurrected on the third day, that was the beginning of grace. When he resurrected was the beginning of grace. When he, when he resurrected was the release of the covenant of good health, the covenant of peace, the covenant of grace, the covenant of wealth, the covenant of anything good, joy, anything good that the spirit of God wants his children to have. The Bible says the thoughts God thinks of us are thoughts of good and not of evil to give us a future, to give us hope. That's in the book of Jeremiah 29 verse 11. So he said here, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus also brought about peace, which is in the redemption package. Then the second bit says, through whom also we have access by faith. That is, through Jesus Christ, we have access to God by faith. So, Jesus has already done the work for us. Jesus has already done the work for anything we want to access God through. He has done all the job. The job is done and dusted. 
nobody can reverse it it remains so the blood was shed christ died for our sins and everything is there waiting for us as human beings to activate it and he says and through whom also we have access by faith so we have access to god by faith so when we begin to walk in our faith we begin to walk in the doings of the teachings of the word the precepts the statutes the ten commandments of god and we begin to walk in these things the fruits of the spirit the teachings of jesus then we have access by faith we begin to exercise our faith we have access to god continually by faith then it says into this grace in which we stand access by faith into this grace in which we stand so we are already standing in grace where when 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 you wake up in the morning you are in grace when you eat you are in grace when you sleep you are in grace when you go to work you are in grace when you go you're going out is in grace you're coming in is in grace the fact that you breathe the breath of life is in the grace of god so when you do all these things in grace he says in this grace in which we stand so you are you're having access through faith in this grace in which we stand so what he's saying is that you are having more grace through faith in which we stand and more grace could be extra things that grace permits it could be material wealth it could be it could be um some 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 sort of giftings which you want to covet um according to the book of corinthians i said you should covet it earnestly from god then um some other promises of the spirit which you will crave for now most people christians will crave for material things and doing that is through um your faith through exercising your faith in which you stand so you're already standing in faith but yet you are ex you, you are exercising your faith to to um get more things that that grace permits you to have this is and rejoice in hope of the glory of god so whilst you are doing it you are glorifying god whilst you are doing it you are hoping hoping hope is a feeling of the feeling or or expect of expectation or desire for something for a particular thing to happen now when you begin to have hope god will bring about those things in your life so the hope of the glory of god so when, when you begin to request those extra things which um which faith permits you anticipate hope in prayer you're hoping in fasting you're hoping in perseverance in your endeavor you're hoping then god you are hoping and we're hoping for the manifestation of the glory of god in that thing that is giving a testimony when you go give a testimony and you are glorified and god in turn is glorified then the third bit says and not only that but we also glory in tribulation so here apostle paul was talking about the other side here he spoke about the anticipation of hope anticipation of hope in the glory of for the glory of god in the grace which we stand for now that that hope is used to request for more things that grace permits us to have then in the verse 3 he negates it and says and not only that but also glory in tribulation we also glory in tribulation now we glory in tribulation because we at the back of our mind we believe that all things work together for good for them that love god and for them that call are called according to his purpose that's, that's the same book of romans so when we glory in tribulation we are we are, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance so all these things are stationed at at the back of our minds so he said but we also glory in tribulation now the bible in the book of first um first thessalonians 5 verses 17 and 18 says in all things 
give thanks. In all things, give thanks. For this is the will of God for you and me, that we may give thanks. So he said, in all things, give thanks. Now here, all things speaks about in every situation that concerns us, in every, in up times, in down times, in sad times, give thanks. In all things, give thanks. So here he speaks about, we also glory in tribulation. Now that is part of thanksgiving. That is part of saying that there is glory in tribulation. It is all part of the fruit of the Spirit, part of long suffering. So we're going to knowing that tribulation produces tribulation produces perseverance. Now what is perseverance? Perseverance is doing something that seems difficult and having difficulty in, in getting to somewhere um, despite the, the difficulties because of delays and because of certain shortfalls which are hindering you to achieve it yet you are continually persevering you are continually going at it you are thudding at it you are thudding at it till the brick wall is broken into pieces and you have um, an, uh, uh, an access way through that's to your breakthrough so you say tribulation knowing that tribulation produces perseverance now what how does that relate when there is long suffering or tribulation which is no cause of yours which is also no cause of god number one god you are in a training school of god god is training your faith number two god is testing your faith your your belief level number three god is is shaping you so he's training you training your prayer life he's shaping you and he's training your prayer life god is training you as a christian is training your temperament God is training you and giving you the tools you, um, that, tend, that tends you towards that perfect nature of God. So he says, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. So when there's tribulation, we continue to exercise our belief, we continue to exercise our faith, we continue to exercise our prayers, we come to exercise our constant communication to God. We come to exercise our, our service to God. We come to exercise our sorry, our our finances in sowing, hoping that we will reap abundantly. So in that um tribulation, it produces perseverance, it brings about an ability to persevere. Now that is the nature God wants in every growing Christian. That is the nature God wants every Christian to exhibit that ultimately we are able to get to that state of perfectionism which he wants us to attain in the flesh. Then here he says character, uh, sorry, and perseverance, character. So when we persevere, in the things of God. We've gone through rigors like Apostle Paul that went through perils and, and met um, many situations of down times and sad times. Now we don't pray to be in that extreme because Apostle Paul when uh, experienced robbers, he experienced beatings, he experienced some very terrible things in the course of his followership with God. We don't pray to be in that space but but however we find ourselves whatever situation we find ourselves we understand at the back of our mind that there ought to be perseverance there ought to be prayers there ought to be sowing there ought to be giving there ought to be exercising of faith there ought to be exercising of belief there ought to be exercising of our will there ought to be obedience to the instructions of god there ought to be a deeper understanding of the word that we do not linger in so much long suffering so he says perseverance character now this is this is um the things which you go through they they go like sometimes when people i mean there's a general thing that sometimes when people have experienced a lot of things in life it affects them in a very positive light they're able to 
to mature they are able to know what time it is they are able to to are able to form to mold the environment and their situations and their circumstances and sometimes override their, their genes override their traits and therefore that is what produces them as a person or as a people now we are not praying for for, for down times here but but we're just giving um, um, giving a, a, an example or a state in which things um, happen and this was Apostle Paul speaking who went through a lot of things so peradventure he was speaking about his experiences so he says character now character is a mental or moral um, qualities which you possess character is your traits character is your features character is your your mannerisms which are very distinctive to you as an individual character is your personality character is your um your disposition character is your mentality character is the way you um portray yourself to others and now, now having certain traits of characters that make you who you are that makes you the persona in which you exude um, whenever you people speak about you or people want to relate with you they relate with you with certain traits of characters with certain um, ways of your behavior behavioral um, patterns so that being said it says perseverance produces character so what he's saying is that perseverance molds your character it changes your character more better still to a more matured more more um considerate if that's the word more mature more level-headed um kind of person so perseverance produces character and character brings about hope as i said earlier hope is a feeling or a desire of a particular thing to happen hope is an anticipation that something would happen and when we exercise our faith we exercise our belief we exercise all we have in god all the ammunitions we have in god we're rest assured that hope is going to our hope will never ever be distorted our hope will never ever fail now i want to pray that god is able to expand our minds on this word that God is able to give us more revelation or knowledge in His Word, that we will be able to walk with Him and run with Him, that ultimately God gives us the grace to continually persevere in Him, irrespective of any situation we're going through. God gives us the grace to continually, thought that it's to be consistent in Him, that, that, that God is very, very endearing to those who believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hence, the grace for diligence, the grace for perseverance, the grace for persistence, the grace for continuity in the things of God that ultimately will be, will be in a position to please our Father who is in heaven, that ultimately we may be able to make heaven. All this I ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord, I thank you so much for listening. God bless, God bless. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen.